This is my friend from Kenya, all the way from Kenya, Oli Ronke. Would you say hi, Oli Ronke? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so a little background. Uh, back in November, you met my friend Sam Owen. And uh, Sam is the man who uh, 54 years ago or so spoke at a little church in Sweet Home, Oregon. A friend had drugged me there. And uh, Sam's message led me to Christ. And you heard me say that we lost track of each other for 50 years, reconnected last year, and I was delighted to have Sam come and, and greet all of you a few months ago. Well, Sam works in Kenya and uh, leads the National Prayer Breakfast and th this whole movement associated with that. And uh, Oli Ronke works with Sam. And uh, in fact, uh, Sam and Lynn were supposed to be here this weekend as well. Uh, but on Friday, their daughter Amy had uh, eight hours of surgery for breast cancer in London. And so they are in London right now with their daughter, as they should be. But Oli Ronke and his lovely wife, Renoy. Renoy, would you, would you stand up and wave and say hello to Renoy, would you? Yes. We're so pleased that Oli Ronke and Renoy could be here. So let's just start by tell us a little bit about you. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. That sounds pretty good. Once <laughs> more. Good morning, church. Good morning. Excellent. I bring you greetings from Kenya. As the pastor said, my name is Ole Ronke. Um, born and bred in Kenya, not really bred, uh, because I didn't grow up with any bread. I was with the cows. <laughs> I am from a group called the Maasai uh, on the Kenya-Tanzania border. Uh, at a very early age. Uh, my father passed on when I was six years old. And I'm the firstborn in the family. And shortly after that, I got an opportunity to move to the capital city of Kenya uh, called Nairobi. And I went to a special school for orphans and needy boys. Um, I finished that school. And for five years, I did odd jobs here and there. And after that, I moved to this country went to the University of Oregon. Go Ducks. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I was told not to say that loudly, <laughs> but I still say, go Ducks. <laughs> um, I came there to do a four-year degree. <clears throat> Somehow I got stuck there for 10 years. I did my first degree in journalism. Then I did an eclectic master's in journalism, political science, and anthropology. And I wasn't done. Um, I got my PhD in communication. But uh, one week after getting that piece of paper, I was in the plane heading back home. In the process of being there, um, I got that young lady from Kenya. She joined me uh, after I'd been there for about four, four years or so. And after a year, she, after a year we got married in a small church in Springfield, Oregon. Um, it's a very traditional Maasai wedding in a little <laughs> tiny rural church in Oregon. Um, and by the time we left, we had three little kids that were born there while I was finishing my PhD. It was in the process of being there. I came to Eugene in 1985, and we left June 95. In the course of being there, in 1988, I met Sam Owen through a mutual friend who used to play football at Oregon State University, and I think they used to do Bible study together. I met him there. We became very good friends with Sam Owen, and when I left, when I went to Kenya in 95, I joined the movement in Kenya that was dealing with trying to work and put a prayer breakfast in Kenya together, similar to what you have in the U.S., and that is the initial background and how I first met with Sam Owen. And it's only four, five, four and a half years ago that I actually joined him full time to work on the National Prayer Breakfast. Just before that, I was a university professor and did that for three years. Then I was headhunted into a Christian organization out of Colorado Spring called Compassion International. And for almost 16 years, I worked with Compassion International. I was responsible for their program across the continent of Africa for about six, seven years. 
And then they moved me to Colorado to the head office to do a global assignment. And I was responsible for Asia, Africa, and Latin America. I think somebody had a geographical problem. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know that those are very far places from each other. And I did that until I took a sabbatical uh, in, in uh, 004, 2013 rather. And after that, instead of going back to Compassion, that's when I joined, teamed up with Sam Owen to lead the National Prayer Breakfast. That is an initial background. Wow. Wow. So, when we hear the National Prayer Breakfast, of course, we think about the event itself, but there's so much more to it than that. It is, as you said, a movement. Tell us what you do there with that. The, the core thing that everyone knows, and just so that you know, we were in Washington, D.C., your National Prayer Breakfast uh, happens the first week of February, and this year it was the 66th annual and we are told no president has ever missed in those 66 years. That is what you get to hear. That's what you get to see. The event one morning in a year. There's a lot that goes on. So my job is to mobilize and have small group Bible studies. And in Nairobi, we have, I think, about seven different groups that meet for breakfast in the morning in different places, different days of the week. And they basically come together, pray together, made up of national leaders, elected leaders, CEOs of big companies and big corporations. In fact, there is one group on, on a Friday morning that is made up exclusively of CEOs. This is to make sure that they talk the same language and none of them can say he's busy because they are all busy. <laughs> and they, can, they come together. It's a very safe space. They have breakfast. We meet from 7 to 9. And that makes me the biggest breakfast eater <laughs> in the country. Because I'm with one group each morning for breakfast, 7 to 9, every day of the week. <clears throat> so my wife doesn't have to make breakfast for me, except over the weekend. <laughs> She's clapping. She's clapping, yes. <laughs> so... So we organize that, um, and it is those small core groups that come together, pray together, that target the leadership, and find a way to bring the leaders together and pray for the country for the sake of the country. There is one, every Wednesday morning I'm in parliament, and I meet with about 20 to 25 members of parliament, and we go through scripture together, we pray together for the country, and more so <clears throat> bring the groups from either side of the political divide to talk to each other and to pray together. Wow. One more thing. Uh, uh, your, your national prayer breakfast that happens once a year brings a couple thousand of these leaders from all over the country together. And uh, you mentioned, too, that it's, it's broadcast. Tell us about that. Yes, the... The National Prayer Breakfast, we are, we are now 16 years into it, not 66 like the U.S. We are 16 years into it, and it's broadcast. It's about three and a half hours the whole morning, and it's broadcast live uh, across the whole country. So the, those who are not present, we have 2,000, about 500 in the tent. It's made up of the legislature, all the elected leaders. Maybe not all of them come. Um, <clears throat> the presidency, the president is always there. We have the judiciary, the armed services. We basically have the entire top leadership of the country gathered under one roof one morning with the CEOs of all the large companies. We all come together to pray, and it's broadcast across the entire country. So if you, even if you're not there, you're actually able to follow it. I actually know of some corporations, some CEOs who are in the prayer breakfast who tell their people, you can take the three hours off, turn on the TV, listen when it's over, turn it off and go back to work. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, what a privilege it is. As many of you know, uh, uh, we have been working in Kenya with the poor. David Opop, who's here today. Wave, David. There's David. He, uh, Spring of Hope. Yeah, no, a lot of you know and love David, of course. 
And uh, so, you know, we take, in fact, David just got back from Kenya two days ago and uh, leads our ministry there where we work basically among some of the poorest of the poor. And uh, Oli Ronke and his team are working at the other end of that spectrum with the highest leaders in the country. And don't you know that we need Jesus at both ends of that spectrum? Isn't that true? So we're really thrilled to be able to partner with you, Oli Ronke, and, and uh, uh, be part of your work. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you very much. As you pray, as I think I was telling the pastor once, this is interesting because my PhD dissertation, uh, at that particular time, this was back in 93, 94, was on the role of the church in the political process in Kenya. I did not know that many years later I would end up doing that. But that I was just doing a PhD to pass <laughs> and get a paper. <laughs> but that is where I am. But as you pray, my lead verse here uh, is what uh, Moses was being told to do in Exodus uh, 18, verse 21. Find men who fear God, men who are trustworthy, and men who hate a bribe, and make them leaders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and ten. In our political situation, and the political people that, the people that we seem to elect to office seem to be the opposite of that. Now, my role is to try and turn them, transform them into God-fearing, trustworthy men and women who hate a bribe. That's a tall order, but as you pray, that is what my task is, and pray that I can actually penetrate those leaders in that line so that they can serve the whole country. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Oluwankei. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, brother.